Browns winners here over the San Francisco 49ers, 19 to 17. And Mary Kay, we've got to start this story, this the story of this game with the defense. They were fantastic today. They shut down a high-powered 49ers offense, holding them to 17 points. And again and again and again, just seemed to answer the bell. They really did. They came out with their hair on fire. They got fired up even more so in a pregame scuffle. I mean, they were relentless from beginning to end. They took this fight to the 49ers. They did not give up. Now, of course, we would be telling a little bit of a different story uh, had the 41-yard field goal gone through at the end, uh, but it didn't. And so, therefore, we get to talk about uh, what's becoming a very dominant defense. Yeah, it truly is just a game of inches sometimes between how you talk about about things but Ashley this defense was absolutely incredible again and they just keep doing this they just keep putting up performances like this yeah I loved what Obo Garanquo told me in the locker room after the game and he made a comment like often he wasn't even talking to me but he was like that was fun and I asked him like well what made that so fun what like obviously you win but what was so fun about it and he's like well they're a really good defense too so when they would make a play we're like all right we're gonna go make a play it's our turn and Miles Garrett heard that right next to him and like like kind of perked up and he turned around and he was like our turn and kind of gave obo like a high five and i think that's how these guys are kind of viewing this in general right now like it is their turn and i think they're very secure in their identity and what they're good at regardless of who they're playing and you know this season so far you know they're three and two they haven't played perfectly but i think they're so secure in that identity and that's helped them navigate some of these early bumps and be able to come out of this game with a win now let's talk about that pregame fight a little bit more, Mary Kay. It seems like, and look, again, this is one of those things, that field goal what goes wide, so this is how we get to talk about it, but it does seem like that just got the Browns going a little bit. That really uh, kind of, I mean, they didn't need motivation, but that really got them fired up and motivated to go in this game. You know, it really did, and I wrote the story about that after the game, and I talked to Martin Emerson, and he said, don't poke the bear. Don't get us started. This is our dog pound. Don't come in here and disrespect respect us. We're not going to take it. And Kareem Hunt said the same thing. He's got a little bit more vested interest in this lakefront home because he's from here. And so, you know, these guys really did not like what happened pregame. They felt that the receivers were, uh, you know, infringing on their space. It turned into a shoving match. Some, you know, some punches were thrown. Uh, you know, Trent Williams blew in like a, a bull in a china shop, knocked off Elijah Moore's helmet. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it got pretty ugly there for a little bit, um, but it served the purpose for the Browns. It gave them that extra edge that they need to put this one over the top. And Ashley, it's just, it shows a team that is not afraid to match another team's physicality. They're not going to back down. And like Mary Kay said, they view this stadium as their home and they want to protect it. Yeah, you know, I also thought it was interesting to hear Obo talk about this as well because he said, well, you can look at it two ways. Were we fired up because of the fight or were we so fired up that that's why the fight happened in the first place and why we were so eager to defend this field before the game even started? So I definitely think you just kind of saw them come into this game with momentum, which feels like a very rare thing even when you are at home. Like, it's not that often that something happens in pregame that gets these guys as fired up as this did but they, they definitely reap the rewards of it now of course we have to talk about pj walker who was named the starting quarterback this week look he didn't play statistically a great game there were certainly things he could have done better through two interceptions almost through what could have been a very costly game costing interception at the end there on a throw that he admitted he should not have made uh, but mary Kay, he gave this team something in the passing game that they just didn't have with dorian thompson robinson yeah you know what I, I just don't know that dorian would have been able to handle this game this defense the speed of what these guys were bringing uh, especially Especially Joel Batonio wasn't in this game. So the game had to be a little bit slower for you. You had to be able to make some good decisions. And, of course, he did make some bad ones as well. And, uh, you know, that's what you would expect from someone uh, who was just called up off the practice squad on Saturday. Uh, but, nevertheless, it was a gutsy performance by P.J. Walker. And, you know, he, he kind of matched the intensity of what the defense was trying to do out there. Again, Two interceptions, one of them led directly to a touchdown, uh, you know, for the 49ers. But, uh, you know, for the most part, he did his job. Yeah, Ashley, Kevin Stefanski called him a fighter, kind of the theme of the day here. And he said he was out there fighting, and that's what this team needed. 
Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, even though this offense wasn't perfect, like he and especially I thought the receivers, like you look at that receiving core today and they made some nice plays to kind of maybe bail him out of some little bit of scary situations. Like Amari Cooper had two really nice catches. That one, that 58-yarder where he picked up most of those yards after the catch. He had that nice one in the third quarter on near the Brown sideline where he was able to stay in bounds. David Bell made a huge catch in the fourth quarter that kept that last strike drive alive for the Browns that led to that Dustin Hopkins go-ahead field goal. So I think they were all really working in tandem. And you talked to those receivers last, two weeks ago, they felt like they didn't do enough to help DTR. And today, I think they feel more comfortable in what they did to help their quarterback. And look, let's talk about Dustin Hopkins real quick too, because Mary Kay, this team made the decision at the end of training camp that they could not go into the season with Cade York as their kicker. And today it pays off that they went out and they made the trade for Dustin Hopkins. Well, yes, absolutely 100%. And not only that, I don't don't know what kind of Wheaties Bubba Ventrone is feeding him, but he is making those 50-yard kicks that he never used to make before he showed up on the Browns' door, doorstep. So he made another one of those today uh, that enabled them to win this football game, and uh, you know, and good for them. And then when you watched uh, Jake Moody, the rookie, miss the 41-yarder at the very end of the game that would have won it for the 49ers, I'm sure most people in this stadium were thinking, what if the Browns had Cade York and they were still suffering those kinds of fates? And Ashley, the really impressive thing is Hopkins did miss one today, but he bounced back. And of course, he made the most important one. Yeah, he made his next four field goals. They quite literally would not have won this game without him because they only had one touchdown in it. And Dustin Hopkins did the rest of the scoring. But yeah, I was sitting next to Mary Kay. I actually covered Jake Moody for a year in college. And when he got lined up to kick that kick, the first thought I had is Cade always struggled with this end of the stadium, the closed end of the stadium. And my second thought was, I have a feeling that Jake is going to overcome correct from his earlier miss, which was wide left, and then the ball sailed wide right. So I think it's just another example of how you can have a good young kicker, and Jake Moody is that, but sometimes the moment or the defense, Denzel Ward got, I think, a great look at trying to block that kick can be a bit too much for a young player. Okay, Browns winners 19-17 to here. The 49ers no longer undefeated. Actually, the Eagles lost today, too. No more undefeated teams left in the NFL. We couldn't possibly cover everything that happened here in one video, so head over to cleveland.com slash Browns and check out full coverage of this game.